Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to the film room session for the Okali. Uh, I'm Ryan Ovazinski, joined here, as always, by the sports editor, Sadiq Tuma. And today, we're going to be looking at some of these plays that went down during this uh, Oklahoma State 42-3 victory over the Baylor Bears. What, what a whooping it was, uh, Sadiq. Let's start there. Um, and just your gen general overview of the game. Uh, yeah, definitely a dominating effort on both sides of the ball. Probably the most that they've seen or OSU has done all season long. Definitely a great effort, and you see it on both sides of the ball, scheming and talent. Yeah, totally. And and um, you saw the defense in action, too. Um, and that is specifically in this play, because, Sadiq, I'm not going to lie to you. And I saw this play, obviously, watching it yesterday. But when you sent me this, right, you sent it to my email, I had to look at this play at least four different times, and I was like, where did the ball go? Okay? But... Charlie Burrow never got it out. Trace Ford just had an absolute domination right there, right? He busted through the line and he got the sack, um, which forced a fumble for a second, but it, uh, obviously Baylor recovered. But yeah, that, this just shows the domination of Trace Ford. And the, you see in two parts. One, Trace Ford, of course, which we'll get to. But also Jarek Bernard Converse. Exactly. Watch RJ Sneed, the slot receiver. Uh, no Ty Conn Thornton, the talented Baylor receiver. So RJ Sneed's the number one guy. He's the number one guy anyway. Mm -hmm. But he was, you know, he was the main guy here. And you see Jarek Bernard Converse. He's lined up outside. OSU is going to go man to man, and Tanner McElster is on top. And typically, that slot receiver in OSU's kind of defense and how they play it, that slot cornerback sort of thing is Tanner McAllister. Usually, in those outside corners, will take the outside right. receivers. But here, you see that little, just little out route, five yards out, quick out, quick read for Charlie Brewer and Jared Brown Converse. Watch him just come down very subtly and just take that out. And I think, at least from what I've seen, Charlie Brewer on that first pump fake because it's just a quick out. It's a quick read, very easy. And he's supposed to throw it, but doesn't, right? And that's yeah. the first thing. But then you watch Trace Ford on the edge. That's where you really have you know, mm -hmm. this great... We always talk about Trace Ford and the talent he has. Obviously, there's so much eye candy with him moving all around the line. But here, you just see it. Ability to beat his man off the line. And on one-on-one, -on -one, if your tackle can't you know, at least give your quarterback a few seconds, then, I mean, you're screwed against a guy like Trace Ford. Sure. Watch it. Nice dip move. Just goes, and he's there, right? He's already just down in mm -hmm. strength, athleticism. You see it all. And this is, this is what I talk about. As just a one-on-one -on -one rusher, you've seen Trace Ford with the spin moves, with this and that, and all the strength. I mean, mostly finesse with him, right? Because he's got so much athleticism. But here, just beats him right off the line. And quick move, using the athleticism, and brings him down. Yeah, brings him down for sure. And, and you see a little play action there, too. Fake handoff. Right. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't be surprised if Trace Ford was able to uh, get that running back, too. Uh, he's that athletic. He's that right. quick. Um, obviously, that wouldn't be his responsibility, but... Man, oh man, he just goes above and beyond what he usually does, uh, and and OSU is going to miss him. Uh, and obviously, getting injured in that game. Right. Um, now going forward, we got the offense right, and the offense really shined the other day. Specifically, the guy, Dylan Stoner, the guy who's tasked to to fill in that role for Tylen Wallace over the past couple weeks, and then specifically in this game because Tylen Wallace is out. Dylan Stoner really proved his worth this game. Just the physicality in his game, right? And that's why he gets this touchdown right here. There's two things you just kind of forget about with Dylan Stoner. One is physical physicality, like you mentioned. Two is speed. Because he's that slot receiver who mostly runs underneath routes, a quick route, second right. routes, makes those tough, gritty catches over the middle. And that's his role when he's a number two guy. When he's a number one guy, he can get down the field mm -hmm. like Talon Walls. He can make catches like Talon Walls. Obviously not to the same degree. <laughs> There's no question there. He's not Tylen Walls. But here you see it, right? First off, I mean, yeah, this is a quick read. Throwing, you, Spencer Sanders sees a coverage, sees one-on-one -on -one with Dylan Stoner. Uh, on the, it looks like cover three back on the back end. And you see Dylan Stoner just go on a quick nine route. First off, the cornerback, Tejada, who's a very talented cornerback, doesn't really get his hands on Dylan Stoner. And here's the thing. Rally Tejada is a very good corner. Easily Baylor's best. One of the better ones in the Big 12. But he just had a tough day because... Mm -hmm. It, I mean, it was great scheming by Oklahoma State all around. But here you see, doesn't really get his hands on him. And Dylan Stoner gets not a, qu a clean release per se, but he gets there, right? And then he's just down the field. And watch him. He's got, look look at this, two a yard, two yards of separation, which I don't think Tahara or just anticipated, right? Right. And we're Spencer. You see the way he throws it. It looks like it's underthrown at this point, which it is. But to me, it looks like he probably thought that it would be more of a dot fight, more hand fighting. Stoner would just be a beat slow because yeah. there would be so much contact. But Stoner just beats him straight off. And in spite of it being underthrown at that point, watch. There, at this point, if if Sanders obviously throws it deep in the end zone, that's an easy catch. Yeah. But Stoner doesn't just you know let it go like that. He he just he goes up and catches it. Watch the physicality right there, right at the point. You know this is what you, 
what's so impressive about Tylen Wallace, his ability to high point catches. And Dylan Stoner can do that too. He's got so much strength and he can high point catches. Like watch it. Obviously not the vertical and the same physicality of Tylen, but watch him go up through the contact. It could be a pass interference, wasn't called here. Um, and just goes up, catches it, and brings it down. Yeah. And there wasn't a bobble or anything. And I believe on the previous play, uh, or one of the previous plays on this drive, he, you had, he had another physical catch where it right. was called for pass interference. Sure. And and that's, he showed the physicality all game long. That's why he got these touchdowns, right? And and in addition to the speed, right? Because some right. of these other touchdowns, you would get both that, both those combinations. You would get that speed. You would get that physicality. There was one where he stiff-armed uh, one of the, uh, I believe it was number four on Baylor. Sure. Um, and he was able to get that done. So hats off to Dylan Stoner. What a game from him. What a performance from him. Three touchdowns on the day. The hat trick, I'd say. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> he had a great game. And yeah, you see it, right? This week, you talk about the speed. The separation right there. Obviously, there's no safety help. He's just going straight to the corner. Good job by Spencer. You know, just identifying that, realizing, and just throwing up a good ball. Uh, obviously, like you said, a little underthrown. But watch it. He just goes up and catches it. Let your receiver make a play. Trust in your receiver. And you see on the back end, too. I mean, just watch him, right? Going up from the back end. That's a difficult catch. Sure. It, it, it's, it, we take it for granted. We see Talon Walls do it each and every week. Mm-hmm. But this is difficult. City, you just had eye surgery, right? So <laughs> when, <laughs> if your vision is a little bit messed up, and, and I'm not saying it is right now. It's not. Um, it's actually getting better. But if you're somebody who's blind, and, and or like half blind, you might look at that for a second and think, is that Tyler Wallace out there? Sure. You, you <laughs> might, because of the physicality there, right? And, and because he's high-pointed the ball so well, um, and you know you just got that production out of Dylan Soner the other day. Um, somebody on the flip side, too, uh, the, a defensive end by the name of Brock Martin, who's been having a crushing, crushing, crushing past two yeah, weeks, right? Yeah, severely underrated. And, and is definitely showing that, that underrated skill that he has um, just as a pass rusher, just as an edge rusher in general. Uh, and, and you see that on this sack right here. Yeah, you see this done here, Brendan Evers and Brock Martin. You're going to see them both push and then watch Brock Martin for on, the, on the edge against the left tackle. Brock Martin comes in full strength, right? Pushes back a little bit. Then watch Brendan Evers collapse a little bit. Yep. And Brock Martin just come right around. The second angle is better, better. It gives you a better of a vantage point. Watch Brock Martin here, right? Mm-hmm. Comes off the line and watch him just push back just a little bit. And then right at this point. Watch the strength from Brock Martin. Mm-hmm. And the, the little swipe move, just watch it, knock the arms down, and goes in. Perfect. And watch Brendan Evers. He's he's doing what he needs to do, right? He's taking up that gap. He is, he's just big, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? I mean, you see him in that B gap, taking up the space, making it impossible for a 76 to get around. And Brock Martin, I mean, great job swiping away the hands. You don't let the lineman get the hands on you, and then push him off and go, and that's where you get the sack. One of the most important things as a defensive lineman is, or as an offensive lineman rather, is to get those hands on, right? To right. to have composure and, and to be able to use your strength while also staying composed to get those hands on and, and have a good grip there. Brock Martin does a great job of not only powerful uh, swiping those hands away, but but speed too, right? right? And, and that's how he's able to get around. And, and Brendan Evers right here and number 72 on Baylor Almost set a pick for him, right? <laughs> uh, if we want to go with basketball terms, um, to to go through that gap right there and uh, to be able to bring down Charlie Burris. Yeah, so right. Really I mean, great performance. Yeah, he's right in that B gap. He's not. He's leaning that way. He's not mm-hmm. letting him go to the other side. And watch at this point, this perfect, good strength. I mean, and just swiping away the hands. You're right. He doesn't let him get his hands to a good place. And yeah, easy. And then out and sack. That B gap's wide open too. Check it out right there after that uh, slight screen from uh, Brendan Evers. So if if uh, Brendan Evers, if you're listening, I'd love to play basketball with you, and, and you can set some screens for us. I bet no one would be able to get around you. Um, finally. We haven't talked about our boy Dominique Richardson yet because he had a great game too. Sure. Back to back to back weeks, I feel like we've had uh, or OSU's had very underrated performances from these running backs and these young running backs. So, how was Dominique Richardson able to get plays like this? Right, I, I believe this is an inside zone run, um, and man, he just bust through for a, a gain of a first down. We haven't really seen had a good look at uh, Dominique Richardson this season, and usually freshmen don't play a lot under mm-hmm. under Gundy. But now you're on your fourth running back. Yeah. I mean, obviously Desmond Jackson played. I wonder if he was fully healthy because he didn't take a full complement of snaps. Yeah, he played 100% last yeah. week. But Richardson had a good game. And here you see some of the traits. Uh, what Desmond Jackson does so well is that outside zone running, right? The zone running. And Dominic Richardson has some of that. Now, I don't think he's the same. He has the same cuts and the same cleanness on that. Mm-hmm. But you just watch him, right? Left side, understands cut and go. And then watch. Strength, right? Breaking tackles mm-hmm. and going. And you see it. I mean... Um, He's he's got that, and then once he goes inside, the vision and the understanding zone running. It's it's you got to find your hole, right? Yeah. You might have three different plays where you're going, but it's it's understanding 
not only when you get to the pole, where you got the little pace and vision to, you know, once you get there, understand, okay, I can slow down for just half a second. Maybe I have to bounce it outside. Maybe I cut through this hole or that hole. Mm -hmm. Understanding that, that that changes in milliseconds. And watch them here, right? Go through there. And then watch the strength, right? This is what I noticed first and foremost, obviously. Yeah. The strength, his ability. His, he's six one, and he is a power back. I think he's the best power back on this roster mm -hmm. by far when you take the four running backs. Jasmine Jackson is strong. No discredit to him. He is very strong. But Dominic Richardson is very, very sure. strong, right? Um, definitely, even Chupa and LD have good strength, but Dominic Richardson, just watch him, right? Arm tackles. You're not going to bring him down. And then just trucks through guys. And we saw throughout this game where, at times, you see the, the build-up speed, you see the cuts, you see the ability to, you know, bounce it outside, good vision. But you watch the zone run. Watch on number 64, Preston Wilson. This is how you're supposed to run it, right? Double team, chip block, and then go to the second level yep. on Dylan Doyle. And at this point, if you're just like, you know, not great division, not understanding, if you're Dominic Richardson, you think, okay, there's not much of a gap there, linebackers there, but you just understand, okay, cut it, and then Preston Wilson p picks up that block, and then suddenly it's wide open, right? It's it's not that obvious, it's not, <laughs> but it's it's understanding and the vision and the understanding and the poise as a freshman running back too, right? One who wasn't, you know, who who's a freshman, who, who's yeah. coming to better competition, Understanding your blocks, let it set up, and then go. You're right. It's almost like a it's almost like a slingshot right there uh, when Preston Wilson right. is able to create that separation because that's what zone running is supposed to be. That zone run to the left, uh, and and do, let's let's talk about Dominic Richardson's cut ability too. Sure. I, I like this because he has that. It's drawn perfectly right there, but he has almost a hesitation right there, sure. that, as if he's going and progressing over to that left side. But then he cuts inside and, and he's able to power run through there. And I counted right there. Um, maybe this angle looks a little bit different, but it, you know, when you when you factor in the defensive lineman too, uh, it looks like there's what four near tackles there, and and he's right. able to truck through some guys. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, you look at it, right? He's got the strength. Watch it, arm tackle one, two, three, four, and then goes down. I mean, that's that's a difficult thing. And I mean, great running by him, power running for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, these were the kind of plays that that. Uh, you know, showed the performance the other day. The scoreboard shows it, but man, these plays were some of the reasons that, that OSU was able to get such a dominant win. That's all we have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the film room, and we will have you covered all throughout bowl season and all throughout basketball season. Thank you.